This week's instalment is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another vlog. It's been uh, quite some time since I've I've been out. I, I've been back from Africa now for uh, I think three or four weeks now, but I haven't been out <laughs> taking photographs once. Uh, pretty much just doing stuff at home. But look who I'm with, Mr. Brian Barnum. It's been a, a really long time since Brian and I have uh, have done anything. Um, so uh, we've come out to Port Renfrew, uh, tried out the uh, the tent last night, the rooftop tent, pure luxury for Brian, I'm sure. And uh, now we're just going to head out to uh, Paysant Creek, which is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful area. Brian's never been there, so uh, we're going to treat ourselves and go go for a hike and get some springtime shots down at Paysant. Some of you may recall Paysant uh, is it's kind of like a grotto, and there's this little waterfall that goes through there. It's about two two or so kilometers to get there uh, along the Wanda Fuca Trail. So, but it's it's beautiful. So, Brian, uh, what what new acquisitions have you made? Fo photo acquisitions, because I know you're always uh, you know get, buying stuff. I haven't bought anything. <laughs> no? Well, what, lens, what lenses are you going to bring in uh, to... Uh... I've got the 24, I've got the 35, I've got the 14. The yeah. One, and the 1 to 400, but I probably won't need that today. Brian's a prime lens man. I like my primes. He doesn't believe in zoom lenses. He's a purist. <laughs> he's, a, he's a purist. No, 35, 14, 24. But I, I hear you, um, you have a, a new camera since I last saw you. No, I've got... Well, I haven't seen you since... Oh, uh, yeah. I've got the I haven't seen you since Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the A7R4 now. Oh, A7R4. And what what are you using for video? 6600. 6600. Is that full frame? Uh, crop sense. Cropped. And I've got the A7R3. All right. So you're bringing all three cameras? No, two. Oh, two. <laughs> And then you got the and then you got the Osmo uh, yeah, the Osmo pocket. pocket. And what about drones? Do you carry a drone? I don't carry a drone. Okay. I did have a drone, but more to carry. Yeah. So, um, what did you think of the new tent? Tent was great. Yeah. And the fact that you never heard me snoring. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, it was really warm. Dry inside this morning. No condensation. So it beat sleeping on the. On the oh, floor yeah, of the I tent, eh? I didn't, normally I feel the stones and yeah. uh, anything else on the ground, but that was great. And it wasn't too bad to put up, you know, when I watched it. So this new tent that I have, um, like I don't, I don't need it for myself because uh, I sleep inside the van, but this year especially I've got uh, trips with Brian and then my friend Paul's coming over, Alistair's coming over, and we'll probably go on little trips. So I figured, ah, I'll just get a rooftop tent and then those guys can just, when they come with me, they can just sleep in the tent. Uh, I have a trip uh, in coming up in June um, to the, the uh, California Redwoods uh, and Paul's coming with me on that. And uh, so it'll, be, it'll just be handy. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with sleeping in a regular tent, but sometimes it's nice to have a bit, a bit of luxury. Up off the ground away from the bears and this particular tent here the reason why i got this one i really wanted to get one that just, like a clamshell that just popped up there's so much easier to set up but this i don't know if you can see this but this particular one only takes up half of my roof rack and it actually opens up uh to the open space on the side of the van here um so it's not taking up all of the roof rack and then I have a box that I put up there. So when those guys do come with me, then uh, we can just put their stuff in the box because the van is not that big. Uh, I am planning to finish it finally in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I really have to uh, box in these, this framing here that I haven't done in over a year or so since I last worked on my van. Uh, I just need the space to store stuff. So I'm going to box that in so I can just throw stuff in there. Uh, I've had a lot of problems with my van lately, a lot of repairs, it's old, um, but I, it's still cheaper than buying a new vehicle, so I just keep repairing it until I can't anymore, 
Uh, the only thing I'm, I'm a little bit worried about is uh, reliability and being in the middle of nowhere and breaking down, which happened last year. Uh, the, the problem with these Delica vans is that parts are getting harder and harder to find and of course because it's a, a Japanese import uh, parts aren't readily available so anyway enough of that right I'm gonna go and head to uh, Paysant and, uh, and see what we can find So Brian and I are pretty close to uh, Paysant Creek, where the grotto is. Uh, but just before then, there's a really nice section of old growth forest, temperate old growth forest, uh, right through here. Some big old cedars, and uh, not sure what the other trees are here. I guess perhaps Sitka spruce. There's a lot of cedars in this section. It's very damp and boggy, but yeah, it's a it's a pretty nice section here actually i don't know if you can see this but you can see the skunk cabbage down here down this section of the trail it just kind of shows you how boggy it is because skunk cabbage really likes boggy areas right almost there Well, Brian and I made it into the little grotto here and it's looking as beautiful as ever. Uh, there is one slight problem though, and maybe you've already seen it. At the back there, uh, there's some trees that have fallen down and they're kind of blocking the, uh, the waterfalls at the back. So that's, that's unfortunate, but you know, it's one of those things that happens around here because this whole area is surrounded by big trees, it's, it's gonna happen sooner or later. This big old one that fell quite a few years ago, that actually adds to the, the composition, but the ones in the background, not so much. Um, I don't know, maybe we can get rid of them uh, with uh, the new feature in uh, the Photoshop beta version. I've, I don't know if you guys have tried it, but uh, it does a really great job of uh, getting rid of stuff that you don't want in the frame. Anyway, I, I think I'm going to leave Brian here to try and get some shots. He's never been here before. And uh, I think I might go back to the old growth forest, just back across the bridge here, and uh, see if I can find something in there. The light is not great. It's looking a bit busy, but uh, I don't know. We'll see what we can find. There's some big old trees in there, so maybe I can find something. The old growth forest was fantastic, but unfortunately the light wasn't being very cooperative. So I decided to go for a little exploration and uh, try my luck on the grotto's lower falls, which I'd never photographed before. Alrighty. Uh, so as I mentioned, I decided to look for something else to photograph uh, because I mean, the grotto is absolutely stunning. Don't get me wrong, but I've, I've photographed it three or four times now over the years. And I think the last time I was here with Gavin, uh, I got a really great shot of it. And uh, I, I, don't, I just don't think I can improve on that shot of that area. Now this waterfall here, this is the lower section of the grotto. And uh, I've had a look at it before and it didn't really appeal to me, mostly because of the, the big logs coming down here. But 
rather than just give up on it, I thought, you know what, I should really challenge myself and go something for something that's less obvious. So I'm going to look around this area and see if I can get a decent shot of this waterfall. And somehow I'm going to have to integrate these, uh, these logs in here. There are some logs just to the side of the camera there, so perhaps I can uh, utilize those and put those in there as well. So we'll have to see what I can come up with. So I'm going to have a quick look around and then uh, hopefully get some shots of this waterfall instead. I think I, think I found a competition. Uh, I've just pushed the recording here so you can see it. Now this is 16 by 9 and, and I, I'm out at 20 millimeters, so you're not going to see the whole frame, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of what I'm looking at. So I've got down really low because I want to be able to include this bolt, this boulder, this uh, log here. And the reason why I've included it is to try and fill the corner a little bit and mimic the angle of the, uh, the trees at the top here. So we have the angle coming in and then your eye goes up the waterfall and then back down the logs on the other side, but in theory anyway. Now I'm just trying to decide whether to use a polarizer or not because when it's not polarized, you have the sheen and that really uh, brightens those areas up so it directs your eye a little bit more. But if I want to saturate the colors, then if I use a polarizer, then that will do that. But it gets rid of some of the sheen that I like on those logs. So what I might end up doing is using the, uh, the polarizer and uh, just layer the two images together in Photoshop I just paint in the areas that I want to be saturated and the other areas that I, I want the sheen. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is what I'm working on right now. Uh, the other alternative to this would be to just move over a little bit to the left and up a bit so that the end of this log here isn't so close to this other log here. Try and create more angles in the composition. I want to take this opportunity to thank Squarespace for continuing to support my channel and sponsoring this week's video. My favorite feature of my Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page from my desktop computer or on the fly using the Squarespace app from my smartphone. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and allows changing a page or design quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Sound interesting? Why not head on over to squarespace.com and try it for free? If you like the platform, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. Right, I've wandered back to the grotto from the lower section there. And I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I've decided to use a wide angle lens. So I'm at 20 millimeters, 16 roughly on a, um, a 35 full frame. And I'm just doing a pano of the lower section here. I'm eliminating the top section. Just want this bottom waterfall. And you can kind of see the, the waterfall at the back, but not really, because it's blocked by those logs. But what I am trying to do is drag the shutter out so that I'm getting this swirling effect from these bubbles. Right now I'm around 10 to 15 seconds, seems to work really well. So I'm using a case uh, ND filter, six stop. And then I'm also using a case uh, polarizer, CPL, to eliminate the glare from the rocks. Because in this case, the CPL really does help, saturates the colors, especially the moss on the sides here. So, uh, 
Pano, all the way from the rock on the right to the left, just the lower section. Pretty, pretty simple image. Everything's pretty much in the center of the frame. Yeah, I think it'll look pretty good. So just for the fun of it, I thought I would uh, upload this uh, image to the new uh, Photoshop beta version that you can download from uh, Adobe. And in that version, they have a new tool over here called the Remove Tool. And I wanted to see how it would work with these logs here. So let's just zoom right in really close and we'll grab that brush and we're just going to sweep over the logs here to see you know see what it does just release the mouse and check that out it <laughs> does a, a pretty darn good job uh so yeah, uh, a tool like this with a situation like this works awesome. Brian and I are just making our way back uh, from the, the grotto there and uh, we decided to come down to the beach see if we could find something down here it's not it's a pretty wild looking beach but there's not a lot of exciting stuff on here um, in terms of features there's lots of rocks uh, but and a few logs and stuff but we found this uh, this tide pool here surrounded by the seaweed and it's really quite beautiful has some really nice patterns in there so uh, decided to try and get that in the foreground and then have the ocean in the background you can just make out the Olympic mountains in the background but I've decided to put on a, uh, a case uh, ND filter I'm gonna use a I tried a six stop uh, which was about six six and a half seconds which looked pretty good actually uh, but now I'm trying a 10 stop just to see if there's much difference and that's 50 seconds and uh, it, it does smooth out the ocean so it's not quite as distracting but it's it's the the greens and the blues that I'm, I'm really attracted to and of course the shapes of those rocks with the tide pools uh, I'm also using a polarizer to add a little bit of contrast uh, seems to be working quite well yeah it's a, it's a really kind of neat neat abstract scene Thank you ever so much for watching this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to give me the old thumbs up as it's always, always appreciated. If you'd like to support my channel in other ways, why not head over to my website where I have a number of items for sale, or you could head on over to my Patreon page where I have lots of extra content from each weekly video. So go check that out. Uh, the link is down below. All right. Till next week, bye.